officers on a police chase spanning two cities. But that's not all. Stay tuned. Fox 10 News at 6 a.m. starts right now. Coming up, Sarah. All right, Michael, thanks. It's now 6.02 and first on Fox 10 News this morning, Mobile Police are investigating an arson case after a man is accused of trying to set his family's home on fire. It happened around 10.30 yesterday morning on Forest Ridge Road. That's near Moffat Road and University Boulevard. Police say the suspect, 25-year-old Tamarcus Martin, was arguing with his stepfather. Investigators say he left the home after the argument, but eventually he came back. He returned a short time later and actually lit fire to the residence while the victim, along with several other people, was in their sleep. Fortunately, no one was injured. Police say Martin caused about $30,000 in damage to the home. He was arrested and is charged with first-degree arson. A Baldwin County man accused of arson is expected to stand trial today. Investigators with the Alabama Forestry Commission arrested Anthony Boone in January of 2013. They said two months earlier, Boone started three wildfires in the Little River community. He faces charges of wildland arson and harassment. Investigators told us at the time of the arrest, a tip from Little River volunteer firefighters led them to Boone. The fires burned a total of six acres. Investigators say they charged charged Boone with harassment because he allegedly threatened people who saw him leaving the scene of one of the fires. Crestview police are searching for clues in a deadly stabbing. Officers were called out to Ferdon Boulevard. That's just north of Duggan Avenue shortly after 7 on Saturday morning. They found a man lying on the side of the road. Authorities say the victim, 35-year-old Samuel Cornish, had been stabbed in the chest. He was taken to the hospital where he later died. Police say they have a person of interest in custody in this case, but so far, no charges have been filed. If you have any information, please Please call Crestview Police at the number there on your screen. It's 850-682-3544. We are expecting to learn more today about a homicide investigation in Pensacola. Escambia County Sheriff's deputies say they discovered the victim's body just after 9 Friday night inside a home on McKinley Drive. That's near Mobile Highway. Investigators say the woman had been shot. They say it appears to be a domestic violence incident. Authorities say a suspect is in custody. The names of the victim and the suspect have not yet been released. A follow-up to a story we first reported last week. A suspect is behind bars in connection to a deadly home invasion in Pensacola. Deputies were called to a home in the 1700 block of Lakeview Drive last Tuesday night. They say they found 76-year-old Ben Stallworth with obvious injuries. He was taken to a hospital where he died. Authorities say the victim's son told deputies he heard his father yell for help. He says when he came into the room, he saw a stranger attacking his dad. The suspect fled the scene. Authorities have identified the suspect as Marcus Farrell Toller. He is charged with aggravated battery, but that charge could be upgraded after the medical examiner's final report is complete. A teenager is facing charges after Pritchard police say he led officers on a crosstown chase, all while armed with a gun. Pritchard police say the chase started on Saturday on Edison Avenue when the 16-year-old driver refused to pull over. They say the chase continued into Mobile and ended near the corner of Ziegler and Cody when the driver surrendered. Pritchard police chief Jerry Spezial says the situation ended well considering the dangers that officers faced. It's just a dangerous situation when you have somebody fleeing in a vehicle. First of all, the vehicle becomes a weapon. Second of all, the weapon becomes a, a, a very serious weapon. So now you have two weapons and you have an individual that's fleeing the police. It's our obligation and duty to make sure that we stop and control this situation instantaneously. Police arrested the teenager. He was taken to the Strickland Youth Center. A pilot continues to recover this morning after his plane crashed in Fairhope. Officials say the pilot lost control of his Cessna plane while trying to land at the HL Sunny Callahan Airport on Saturday. They say the pilot was trapped in the cockpit as the plane became engulfed in flames. Fortunately, three people, two of whom were airport employees, rushed over to help. We were able to pull him from the aircraft before the fire spread uh, and uh, I think what probably would have taken his life had he not been rescued by these people. The pilot was lifelighted to USA Medical Center. He is expected to be okay. The Federal Aviation Administration and the National Transportation Safety Board are looking into the cause of the crash.
Half a dozen countries plan to intensify efforts to find a missing Malaysian Airlines plane. More than 30 aircrafts and some 40 ships are searching for Malaysian flight MH30, but so far there have been no signs of it. The airliner was on its way from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing when it went missing over the South China Sea early Saturday morning. Among the 239 people on board are three Americans, including Philip Wood. His family says they are hoping for a miracle. Pretty calm and pretty strong, and, and uh, you know, we're hanging in there. I'm crossing my fingers that, you know, maybe there's a, a happy ending to this. Meanwhile, officials say at least two passengers on board the missing Malaysian aircraft plane used stolen passports. Now Interpol is working to determine if others aboard used false documents as well. Still ahead this morning, a beef recall may be more widespread than first thought. The problem, the beef may have come from diseased cattle. And visitors are starting to flock to local beaches for spring break. Officials say they're ready for the influx of people. These stories, plus more of your local headlines and your Monday weather forecast with meteorologist Michael White. He says things are looking great for today. It's all coming up after this break. Lots more still to come here on Fox 10 News on this Monday morning. 6.08 is our time right now. Thanks for spending your your morning with us and we will be right back. Business.com in New York. I'm Lauren Simonetti. All right, Lauren, thanks. It's now 616. The USDA now believes a beef recall is long. Fox 10 News in high definition television. Good morning and thanks for watching Fox 10 News on this Monday morning. Today is March 10th. I'm Sarah Wall. Eric Reynolds has the morning off. In the news this morning, spring break is here and local beaches are gearing up for an influx of visitors. In Orange Beach, new lifeguards are being put through their paces. Officials say they have five lifeguards returning from last year, but they're still looking to hire eight or nine more. Candidates were out running drills, including rescues. All are meant to test the candidates' awareness and physical endurance. You know, it's, it's a stressful job. They're out here about nine hours a day in the sun. Um, you know, you're not just watching the water. You're also looking at the, the people on the beach. But you never know if you're going to have one victim or four victims. Um, just because the call goes out for a swimmer in distress, you may get out there and conditions change. You may have four or five. And it's up to you to make sure that all four or five of those people get back to the beach safely. If you're interested in becoming a lifeguard, we have more information posted for you on our website. Just go to fox10tv.com. In Gulf Shores, lifeguards will start patrolling the sands today. Safety officials have spent the last couple of weeks preparing for the spring break crowds. That includes putting up more signs and parking toll machines on the beach, as well as coordinating traffic lights to ease congestion. The more people we get down here, there's more taxing of our infrastructure. And so we've got to make sure that we're prepared to try to move traffic safely and efficiently as possible. If you are planning on taking a dip in the Gulf, it's important to pay attention to the beach warning flag. So here's a quick refresher. A double red flag means do not get in the water. Conditions are dangerous. The single red flag means high hazard. That could be high surf or strong rip currents. A yellow flag means caution. Look out for moderate surf or currents. A green flag means conditions are calm. And finally, a purple flag means there could be dangerous marine life out there like sharks. Also in the news this morning, two cities in South Baldwin County will decide this week if they want to look at building a new jail for the area. The proposed jail would be used by Gulf Shores, Orange Beach, and Foley, as well as the Sheriff's Office. Supporters say such a jail would cut down on a number of costs like vehicle maintenance and travel. But there are also many questions about the exact cost of building a new jail. A feasibility study would examine the pros and cons. We've seen that working together and working together and, and having a jail like that could be beneficial to the people of the county and beneficial to our agencies. Foley has already agreed to pay for its part of the study. Gulf Shores will vote today and Orange Beach will discuss the study tomorrow. We will keep you updated on what happens. It's a sea battle that has gone on for years. The feds against the fishermen. Well, this week you have two chances to voice your opinion on changes to red snapper fishing. The Gulf of Mexico Fishery Management Council wants to know what you think about Reef Fish Amendment 28. The amendment would change the way fisheries allocate red snapper resources between the commercial and recreational sectors. Officials expect the change to benefit those who fish recreationally for red snapper. So the first meeting is tonight at 
6 o'clock at the Fairfield Inn & Suites in Orange Beach. That's on Loop Road. The next meeting is tomorrow night at the Renaissance Riverview Plaza in downtown Mobile. It also gets underway at 6. If you live near Grand Bay or Portersville Bay, you may notice the water turning reddish today. Do not be alarmed. It's part of a dye tracing study. The FDA and the Alabama Department of Health are conducting a study at the Biolabatory Wastewater Treatment Plant. The purpose is to determine if outflow from the plant into Grand Bay and Portersville Bay has an impact on nearby shellfish harvesting waters. We will continue to follow this study and we will let you know what happens. A heads up for drivers in Mobile, you will want to avoid driving through Municipal Park this week. That's because starting today, City Works crews are repairing a drain and they're resurfacing Museum Drive just east of the Mobile Museum of Art. The whole stretch of Museum Drive will be closed, so plan ahead and take an alternate route. Work is expected to last all this week. For more information on these stories and much more, you can go to our website. It's fox10tv.com. You can also sign up for email and text alerts to let you know about breaking news or weather events. Remember, we're also streaming all of our newscasts online, so you can stay up to date on the go. Once again, it's fox10tv.com. Austell USA and Mobile is about to begin construction on another vessel for the Navy. A keel laying ceremony is today. Also, thousands of people marched across Selma's Edmund Pettus Bridge to remember Bloody Sunday. The march was a turning point in the civil rights movement. Michael? Thanks a lot, Sarah. Outside Six forty three is our time right now on this Monday morning. Thanks for joining us here on Fox Ten News. I'm Sarah Wall. A new location, but the same great event, the twenty fifth annual Chili Cook Off, is being called a big success. The Chili Cook Off has been held in downtown Mobile for the last twenty four years, but this year it was moved to the grounds in West Mobile, so the teams had more room to cook. Some eighty teams took part in the cook off, and for the most part, it was about more than bragging rights. It's for a good cause. Everything we do here, just all the money goes toward to help fight this terrible uh, cancer. So just, that's what we do. More than 25,000 people attended the cook-off. The money raised will go to the American Cancer Society. Orange Beach got its fair share of crowds this weekend for the 40th Annual Festival of Art. The event features more than 90 artists and everything from performance art, dancing, and music. Hundreds of people enjoyed the sights and sounds of the event. Local artists say it's a big opportunity. Uh, fortunately, sometimes, you know, people come back, even if, they, if you don't sell anything at a show, you know, they call you and say, hey, you know, I saw you at the show, I like your work, but I want this specific piece done, and, you know, you do that, and, and it, it makes, it's really rewarding, you know, to be able to create something for somebody uh, and, and have them, you know, it's be like an heirloom and handed down for generations, you know, art's around for a long time. The event serves as a fundraising event for the Orange Beach Arts Center every year. Fair Hope is getting ready for a big arts and crafts festival. More than 200 artists from across the nation will show and sell their best artwork on the streets of downtown. There will be plenty of live entertainment and food to enjoy through the three-day affair. The festival is Friday through Sunday. Admission is free. There is a special screening in Mobile today. It's for a new documentary called Pull of Gravity. These are guys coming home, they're terrified. They're scared, really, of what the, the unknown of what's out here. Pull of Gravity is a film that tells the stories of three ex-convicts, each attempting to make his way along the challenging continuum of re-entry into society. It captures its subjects as they lay bare their stories, their fears, and their tentative dreams. The film also gives insight on how the responses of family, friends, and others can impact their journey. You can see a private screening of the documentary this evening at the Mobile Civic Center. You do need to make reservations. We posted a link for you on our website. It's Fox 10 TV. Dot com. 646 is our time right now, and it's still dark outside this yes. morning. Yes, it is. As we have made that adjustment for the, the, the time change, and yeah. you may not be used to it being dark right now, but by this evening, it'll still be light out for yeah. later and sunny today, right? Exactly. Yeah, we're expecting yeah. solid sunshine with a high in the mid 70s, Sarah, but I've been noticing a lot of Facebook statuses and tweets saying, I'm commuting in the dark. You right. Know, a lot of, yeah, a lot right. of people aren't used to it. Right. But the good news is, if you're commuting in the dark, you set your clocks right, and you're going where you need to be on time. 
time today. That's right. Because that could be an issue if you didn't fix your clock. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But you are right about the additional daylight in the afternoon and evening. That is the upside. And we are going to see plenty of sun in the sky with a high in the mid 70s. We will talk more about that in your forecast. And Aaron, he checks your traffic. That's all coming up after you see this. Your time is 647.